What's it been like? I mean, we're talking 10 years here to get to this point today. Well, it's it's been a difficult road. Um, we've been we've had a lot of highs and lows, mainly a lot of lows. Of course, you know, trying to um, I had a you know Jerry and I have a two year old daughter, and uh, at the time of his death, and through the last nine and a half years, and the little older that she got, you know, the more she asked about her dad and. Um, questions. She's wanting to know what happened and trying to tell her to try and fill her in to where she would understand. Um, to nights her waking up in the middle of the night crying and wanting, wanting her dad and telling me she misses her dad. She um, through, through the years of school, like in second grade, she wrote, wrote little books about her dad and then she went and drew the pictures of a monument and putting ice on it and showing balloons where we let them go. And I mean, it's been difficult. It, it's, um, our lives have changed. Um, I no longer have a companion, a best friend, uh, dealing with, uh, going through the first trial and, you know, he was charged with those. And then I felt like when it was the pellet overturned it that, you know, justice was taken away from us, and then going through this 10 years later, and justice has been served again. Do you feel like you finally have some sort of closure at all? Yes, I do feel like we have some closure now. Uh, it will never, ever be a complete closure, but I feel as though, like I had said, that justice has been served, and I gave back the truth being known that, you know, the honor of my husband and these kids' his father, that what the truth really was. You know, from, from the time we got the verdict on this, that it's time to move forward now. We need to put all this in the, the past. We don't have to uh, think about this anymore, and we need to go on as the people who we are and that we've always been. Mm -hmm. um, what was the hardest part for you in the last three weeks? Reliving the part about them, how they had to, how to get my husband out of the car. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Again, they, the hardest part was have them tell Having us. to listen to the EMTs and the firefighters about how they had to, to cut my husband out of the car. Uh, the autopsy pictures, how the autopsy was performed. To think that um, the whole time I'm sitting there and having to listen to that again, that you have someone that has never once ever showed a bit of remorse or never ever said they were sorry. This. 10 years wouldn't have had to been like this and the, if he had only had said, hey, I'm sorry, it was an accident. And um, having to look at him and, and hear those things, it um, wasn't right. Or just to have him say it's my fault. Right, I mean, I understand if he was told, you know, I can't talk to you, but he could have said, I'm sorry for your loss. This would have never came to this. Did it feel like the wounds that you had tried to get healed and you've been treating for 10 years, were, were they ripped back open? Oh, yeah. And it seemed like it even hurt more now. I mean, it, it's hurt all these years. But it hurts even more because of something that shouldn't have ever had to be brought open again like this. And now that the kids are all older and what they've had to go through, I mean, they're all older, they understand more, and there's things that they've had to hear that they shouldn't have to have heard through all this. Does, is it also hard for them? Yes, it is. It's very hard. Um, 
it's hard for the older kids to be able to go out in public and not been asked questions or um, one of the oldest girls, you know, she's moved away. She's, she doesn't even live anywhere close now. Um, they pretty well and they stay out of the limelight of things. And with his youngest son, um, you know, he was about nine or 10 when this had happened and the, the trying times that he's went through growing up and the things that he's had to go through that probably he wouldn't have had to go through those the roughest times if his dad had been here to help his mom. I mean, did you see these back in the criminal trial too? Or? No, I didn't sit through it. They wouldn't let me. So it was all new to me too. Oh, so you never even seen the picture? Well, you well, haven't seen or heard the picture, you know. I didn't, I missed all the testimony through the autopsy thing even too because of the picture. So no, I during the criminal, I didn't see any or hear any of that testimony. And then, like two years later, I had, I regretted not going to see Jerry in the morgue, and um, I just needed to see his face. Mm -hmm. So when I went to go look at him, they had him on their computer, and I had seen, at that time, the pictures of his arm and his side, and um, then I got to see his face. Of course, that's when they tried to save him, and he had the neck brace on and the tongue depressor in. But uh, and then, but until this trial, that's the first time I got to hear who was there. And yeah. actually, I mean, you hear they tell you things, but hearing it, I didn't know all that. It's a horror. It was horrible, and the people that come up on that scene and. Are there to help people, not, and then not knowing that he was in the car, and then how his feet was trapped, and to hear that guy say he had to take one leg, one foot at a time to get it out. Probably because it was. Because it was stuck. They were both stuck under the dash. Not me.